Hello and welcome back to the Celtic Way sit down. My name is Ryan McGinley. You can see my Twitter handle is at the Ryan McGinley. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Sasha Pisani. Sasha, how are you doing? I'm great, mate. How are you? Things are good. Yeah, things are good. Yeah, the time difference is a wee bit weird, but we'll, we'll work through it. But definitely, um, obviously, it's six o'clock where you are, and it's nine a.m. over here. So, Sasha, I know you're an e- expert on A League football, Australian football in ge- general, and the reason I've brought you on today is to talk about Celtic's potential new signing, who is Marco Tilio. By all accounts, it looks as if he will be joining the club for Melbourne City. Um, just just off the bat, as a sort of overview, what what do you make of Marco Tilio? What would you think of him as a player? Really exciting player. Um, I, I think he sums up the, the crop of players that are coming through at the moment uh, in terms of young Australian talent. Um, he's the one that's really shone through this season and um, really made an impact. Three years at Melbourne City, but this has been his time to shine. He's really taken his game to a new level. He spoke openly about wanting to test himself abroad. Um, there was talk that he might you know, link up with his former coach at Troyes in France, Patrick Osnorbo, um, but they got relegated. He spoke openly about maybe going to Belgium or, you know, Holland or Italy. Um, but this seems a, a great move for him. And I think it keeps up the Aussie quota uh, at, at Celtic. Uh, we'd like to keep the Aussies there. Ange out, Marco in, still got Harry and Aaron there. So, uh, yeah, it's it's great for him in Aussie football. Yeah, there definitely still seems to be that that sort of Australian connection still at the club, even with Ange Postecoglou leaving the club. So just just talking about Marco Tilio, he's uh, 21 years old, I believe. He made his pro debut. It was against Kawasaki Frontal, who were obviously um, Rio Hitati's former team. I think it was a 4 nothing defeat. Um, and he, then he scored in his A-League debut against Central Coast Mariners, another connection to Celtic with regards to Tom Rogic's former team. Um Six appearances for Sydney, one goal, but he rejected his contract offer from Steve Corica in search of more game time. Um, I was just wondering what you made of that, the fact that a, a very young player rejected a contract to go and search for more first-team football. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's an interesting one. We At the A-Legs, we've sort of done a, a behind-the-scenes sort of series um, with players this season, and before the grand final, we've actually spoken to his family. Um, and they'd, they'd said that there was an offer on the table from Melbourne City to come across, but there was actually a deadline. Um, and he was sort of hesitant to sign, leave Sydney. He's a Sydney boy. His family's in Sydney. Um, he actually had like a birthday party that night and the, the club was saying, you know, we need to know now. And they quickly scrambled, signed that contract to go to Sydney. Um, and the rest is history. At, at Sydney, I was speaking to one of his former coaches and he, he's always been highly rated. He's always been a player that's had that X factor. Um you know, even at 15, he was playing five years up, you know, against guys that were, you know, five years older in, in Sydney with the youth team. Always a standout there with Sydney's youth academy. Um, on that, in his A-League debut, he actually scored a goal at the end, but also I think pretty, pretty sure he had an assist as well. So in terms of debuts, I don't think they get much better than that. Um, but at Melbourne City, they're, they're, they're obviously the giant of football here in terms of their, you know, three straight premierships, um, you know, it's obviously different to, you know, European football. We have playoffs or a final series. So even though you, you finish top of the table, there is the final series at the end of that. But they've won a record three straight of those, and he's been influential in that. Um, he's had to sort of work his way into that front line. They like to play three up front. Um, he's had to be patient at times, still a young boy, but he's just really taken on all the feedback from his various coaches, and um, he's reaping the rewards now. Yeah, he's one of those players that you watch the highlight reel and you're really, really excited by what you see. Like, I'm very much a winger, a winger that takes on his opponents. It's sort of similar to Patrick Roberts, who was at the club previously. That I've heard a few people make that similarity. So he signed a, he signed a three-year deal with Melbourne City in September 2020. I think he signed an extension as well because he's, his contract's up next year, I, I presume. Um, 82 appearances, 20 goals, 19 assists in all competitions. Great numbers for a 21-year-old. Last season there, he scored, uh, he played 31 games, 10 goals and 6 assists. For a young player like Marco Tilio, Sasha, these numbers are really, really impressive, aren't they? Oh, they're, they're, they're incredible, you know, and it just shows the, the consistent development. You know, if you look at his his numbers in the three years at, at City, they've gotten better every year. You know, the 10 goals this season. And it's not just the goals, it's the, it's the matter of the goals as well. They're all sort of, I think most of them, if you've seen the highlights, most of them are just crackers. And he's a really direct player, likes to run at players. Um, and obviously announced himself as a, you know, got himself in the spotlight with that goal for the Oli Ruse at the Olympics against Argentina, which was a, 
a famous result for Australia, and that really sort of caught the eye of a lot of people. Um, but he's, the biggest thing, yeah, just that that development um, this season, watching him in the, in the flesh a couple of times. And the biggest thing for me with him is that he's obviously not the biggest player. I think, you know, people can see him as quite small, but he, he's not bothered by it. There's been some times where he's just been... He's come in for some physical stuff, and if he if he does end up at Celtic, he's got to come in with you know for the physical side of football. But that doesn't phase him. He gets back up. There was a game in the semi final, and he was just getting battered. Uh, but he just got back up, and it was just still running at. Uh, I think he, he 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 thrived in that sort of situation. He just kept getting back up, running at defenders, and just causing an absolute ruckus. So I think it's exciting for Celtic fans. I'm not sure how much game time he's going to get. But he's at the right age. Uh, we're not sure what's going to happen to a barter at Celtic as well. That might be a factor in terms of you know the future there. But um, they've really got an exciting one on their hands, which sort of sums up where you know in terms of Celtic strategy, it's a it's a good one. Yeah, you, you were mentioning obviously his Australia sort of international career. He's made seven appearances, but you could you could probably say it's ten appearances if you count his Olympic team appearances. That's ten and one goal. No, none in the senior team as of yet, but one in the, the Olympic team. What does that say about um, Talio? The fact that he's made all these appearances so far. I, I know it, it's, it's very much a team in transition. Australia, we're getting young players through the door. So what does it say about Talio that he's made that sort of jump to the to the senior team already for Australia. It is again. It's about just the progress he's making, um, his development. He's obviously not the the first one on the team sheet in terms of the the Socceroos and Graham Arnold and, and the team they got at the moment. But he played against. Um, he obviously didn't play against Argentina. He was away at the with the Olive Roos in France for that prestigious tournament. Um, but he did play against Ecuador in the in the March series against some you know some big names there and came off the bench and did quite well. Um, but you know he has the taste of international football, and I think that's important when you're, you're going to make that switch across to, to to Scotland and Europe. You know he he knows what he's going to get himself into. He's been to a World Cup, uh, didn't play, but you know he's he's a really exciting prospect, and it's 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 exciting for Australian football because the, he obviously does have room for improvement. Um, there's there's no you know denying that. I think more so from the defensive aspect, but he's even improved in that regard. But it's just. Um, Exciting to see him making those steps, and you know, for for the you, t- you look at you know transfer fees being talked about, but if it's true what they're sort of paying, I think it's a shrewd bit of business from Celtic. Yeah, you, you were talking about the the fee there, the, the reported fee of around one to two million. That that seems a bit low for a player of his of his quality. Do you think that's because of uh, you don't want you don't want to make any assumptions about the league that he's playing in? But do you think that Celtic see that league as a sort of place to get? players cheaper or do you think it's just down to, to his contract situation the fact he's only got a year left and he wants to make that move uh, to Scotland um, it could be a bit of both um, I think it's a it's an untapped market I think well you know Scottish clubs are obviously really looking there now if you see Hearts and say Mirren and some of the other clubs that have you know gone down that path there's a couple of more being linked to move to Scotland um, I think but I think the the league is you know me not being biased working for the league but you know it's a, it is it is a growing league and, and the, the the young talent coming through there's no doubting it, it's a, it's on the up you know there's talk of i'm sure celtic fans would have seen during you know Andrew's time there there was talk you know talk about trying to bring this story and kunda there a young uh, adelaide united boy who's only 16 uh, or 17 now being linked to Bayern. He apparently he's off to Bayern munich but there's so many more of these stories coming through of young talent and i think more eyes on the a league the more they're in demand, I think, you know, those fees will slowly increase. Um, but that's, I think, just part and parcel. I think hopefully as, as Australian clubs and Aussies, they'll start demanding more. Um, but I think that's just part and parcel. Yeah, I think it's the same for Japan as well. Hopefully you see that in the coming years at the transfer. Maybe, maybe not for Celtic, but in, in, term, in terms of the transfer fees, they go up because the, the players coming through have clearly got the quality. Just in general with Marco Tellio, um, what would you say are his strengths, judging by his time both in the A-League and internationally? And do you think that his strengths will directly translate to Scottish football in the process? I think so. I, I can see him making the transition. I, I, I can't see why not. Just the, the drive he had this season, you could just see he was hungry and, and determined to, to really earn that move abroad. You could see he was ready. And like I said, he, he spoke openly about wanting to, to go overseas. There was no hiding that this would be his last season. We've seen a lot of those players from the City team this season have gone overseas now. We've seen a couple gone to Belgium. Um, 
I think a couple more might go to the UK. Um, but he he was ready, and I think you know it's just it's his pace, directness, the ball at his feet. You'll see just it's like glued to his foot, um, so quick. Um, and for 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 a small fella, uh, he's strong. Um, so so they're getting a player. I think that's obviously any player that make you know changes clubs and changing leagues is going to be a, a period that, uh, they need to adapt. But I, I can't see him having a problem there. Um, it just depends as well what you know what Brendan wants to do with him, how he's going to play him, you know who's ahead of him. You know it's, that's a it's a a team that's just coming off winning a treble, uh, you know full of quality players. So he you know, they'll have his work cut out. Um, but it's a long season, Champions League football, cups. You know he'll have his chance to to really show what he's about. Yeah, and obviously talking about his, his strengths. What uh, on the other side of things? What would you say are his his weaknesses in his game? What what do you think that he he's got to work on in order to take that next step? Hopefully at Celtic. I think it's a defensive side. I, I spoke to uh, I asked his coach about this after the semi final. They'd won. Um, and he sort of alluded to the fact that some people talk about the defensive side of things, him tracking back and getting behind. Um, but he's showing growth there. Um, and I don't think, you know, I think if you if you show enough going forward and you're strong in, in attacking sense, I think you can sort of compensate for that. Um, but he, he, he's, he'll get better. He'll get better. I think um, the defensive side, like I said, is the one area that probably lacks a bit. In, in that front three for him to track back. And that's one, I think, you know, Brendan and all that will make that clear to, to work on that. Um, but I, and, he's, and I think it's just him maturing as well as a footballer. He's still only 21. You know, it's still, it's it's not, you know, he's not 17, but it's not, he's still got his, he, the biggest years of his, of his career ahead of him. So just growing into his body still. Um, but I, personally, I'm, I'm just, you know, when I saw the, the, the reports of this, I was excited because, you just look at the highlights. I see him doing it at Celtic, and I think being an Aussie as well is a bit biased, but it's always great to see Aussies doing their thing at Celtic. You know, a strong history dating back, you know, to Vadu, Corinne, Scott, and McDonald, and stuff like that. So it's it's great to see that tradition continuing. And I think you know, Scottish fans are going to be excited. This is a guy that's you know, Scottish fans, uh, Celtic fans love attacking football, fun football, and he's going to bring that. You know, taking on players, they'll be off off their off their um, seat. So it's it's great. Yeah, he sounds like a player that's really going to excite the Celtic support. Just just on that point, do you think there are any players who are similar to Tilio with regard to his play style? Obviously, I've mentioned before, he does, he does through watching the highlight reels, he does remind me a wee bit of, of Patrick Roberts, who took, took men on, that maybe relied more on his skill to beat players. And I know I know Tilio is quite fast, but Patrick Roberts uses, used his skill to get past players. Do you, think, do you think that's a fair comparison, or do you think there would be another comparison that would be better uh, Regarding who Telly would remind you of, yeah, it's a decent shout. I, I don't know to be honest. I just think he's his own sort of player. It's hard to sort of. There's just there's just something about him that makes him unique. I'm not sure if it's it's just his physical stature. You know, every <laughs> when you think of someone small, you always think of, you know you know Messi. And I'm not saying he's Messi, but you just see those little players and you know they're great with the ball, their feet. Um, but I think you might be on the money there with with Roberts. Um, I probably uh, you you got me there a bit. I, I I can't really, I can't think of someone that I could compare him to. Um, yeah, but you you're probably better, <laughs> better, better to to make that sort of comparison from the players you've seen in Scotland or Celtic. But I I I, I think yeah, he brings something unique to the table, which which is also exciting. Well, in terms in terms of comparisons, though, there was there was another Australian young player that came to Celtic a couple of years ago, in Daniel Alzani. And I know it didn't really work out for him at Celtic. Do you think there's any comparisons between those two players? I know they both play on they played in the wing, but would you say they're quite different? Yeah, I've seen I've seen this kind of a couple of times on Twitter, and I sort of shut that down. Just I just I think just given the body of work, you know, when Daniel made that move across, he'd hardly played football really. There wasn't there wasn't a, a big body of work. An experience coming over to Celtic. Obviously, unfortunately for him, that that big injury sort of ruined his his time at at Celtic and derailed his career. Um, but with you know with with Tilio, he's coming across with three years of experience at City. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's not a comparison I don't, don't like to make. There's a lot of differences there. So yeah, yeah. Hopefully, it does a lot better. Obviously, it was. It was unfortunate the way um, done his ACL and his, his debut for Celtic. It, you couldn't get much much more unlucky than that. Um, I know he's playing for MacArthur FC back in Australia, so I hope, I hope he's doing quite well. Um, 
just um, just to talk about Joe, Joe Dudgeon, who's of, of a scout at Celtic. He he joined the club in March 2023, I believe. He was previously at Melbourne City as a scout in the same capacity. Do you think that he had a say in Tilio's imminent transfer to Celtic? Just that link between the two clubs and obviously the fact that Celtic are a de facto member of the, the City group now, you would say? Perhaps, perhaps. I think I, I, I definitely think there may have been a that that CFG link may have been in there. I know speaking to Brian Marwood um, at the time when Ange first went to first went to Celtic, and you know he gave he was asked for some uh, some feedback on Ange from his time at Yokohama from Celtic, and he gave him a, a ring endorsement. So I think there's a yeah there's a definitely a CFG link there. Whether how much related to this sort of this transfer, I'm not too sure, but there's definitely, I think there's definitely links there between CFG and Celtic that they're sort of capitalising on now, which is beneficial for all parties, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And just just a point that maybe you maybe made earlier, but just to, just to touch on that again, with with regards to Tilio, is he a player to instantly make an impact on the team, maybe on the right wing or the left wing, and we he can play both positions. He's played. Up front as well, a couple of times from from what I saw in the in, in the, the sort of analysis, is he is he a player to instantly make an impact now, or is he more of a development option for the future? Definitely can make an impact now. I, I don't think he'd be making the move to sort of sit around and wait. I think he you know he's hungry. He wants to to make an impact. He looks ready. Um, he'll need to take you know take his chances. Like I said, that's a this is a team that just won a treble that has you know quality all over the pitch. Like I said, you know is a going to stay? You know, Yota looks, you know, cemented in that team. He's a superstar of Celtic, but you know, he can play on the left, can play on the right, can run through the middle. Um, yeah, I think he'd be ready to, you know, hit the ground running at Celtic if he's given the chance. Definitely. Yeah, he, he sounds like a really, really um, exciting player to watch, and and for now and for the future. Just just before we finish off, is there anything that you want else that you want to add regarding um, Marco Tellio? Is there anything that you haven't touched on that you maybe wanted to talk about regarding the player? I'm just I'm just looking forward to to being from Australia to just to see the Celtic fans enjoy him. I think um, we we seen you know Aaron Moy last season. You know what he brought to the table as a free transfer. I thought he was ter- terrific, uh, but this is a different type of player again, um, and he's going to bring excitement. And I think just being an Aussie and being a football fan and and watching Celtic, um, I'm just excited to see this. The, the Celtic fans be excited over this. I think you know there's going to be more players coming through the door. Uh, you know, Brendan trying to put his stamp on this team, um, but just seeing that the, the get seeing the Celtic fans enjoy what we've been, we've been able to enjoy from 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 Melbourne and Australia. I think that's the, the biggest thing um, to just see that unfold from you know <laughs> all the way across here in, in Melbourne to, to to Glasgow. I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, we're hoping that it gets announced in the next couple of days and we can start really getting excited to see our new our new winger in action. Or, or so it looks like it, it looks as if the deal is basically done. So. <laughs> Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing him in action and hopefully he's another good Australian talent. We've had plenty of them in the past sort of 10, 15 years or so. So hopefully Tilly is another one. Um, before we finish off, uh, Sasha, where can where, where can Celtic fans find you just if they want some more information about Australian football or any, any players that are linked with Celtic uh, from Australia or the surrounding areas? Just on Twitter, just my Twitter handle, S-A-C-H-K-0, Sashko. Um yeah, just there, just in spreading the the word of Australian football and Asian football, and um, getting around the you know the Celtic football club. Um, so sort of always watched even before the Ange days. Always sort of watched them growing up with you know Viduka there and family friends being big Celtic fans. So always had a close connection with Celtic. So and that will continue. But it's always nice when there's Aussies involved there. Harry Kuehl still there. Aaron hopefully you know continues on next season. So um, yeah, Twitter's the best place. Thank you very much, Sasha, and thanks again for joining me. Just before we finish, um, if you look down at the bottom at the banner, if you visit www.celticway.co.uk, you can find all the latest journalism pieces from myself, Aidan, Tony Haggerty, um, analysis pieces from Stuart Ross, uh, Duco James and Alan Morrison. So if you, if you would like to take out a subscription, then click that link or, or type in that link in the URL below. Sasha, thank you very much for joining me. Um, fingers crossed it gets announced in the next couple of days and we can be excited about watching uh, Marco Tilio in action. But all that's left for me to say is thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you on the next video.